So, there's been a lot of buzz about DeepSeek, a new large language model that is blowing the minds of the AI community because of its speed, cost, and performance. But how did they make it so good? DeepSeek R1 is a competitor to OpenAI's O1, a reasoning-based model that thinks about its answers before coming to a final conclusion. It excels at really difficult logical tasks that require complex reasoning. Up until now, we didn't know exactly how OpenAI trained O1, but this paper by DeepSeek gives us some insights. So how does it work? There's a classic story about how LLMs are trained. Step one, get some data. Step two, set up a transformer model. Step three, spend millions and millions of dollars on GPUs. And step four, the LLM learns over a really long period of time and this massive data set how to write like a human. But there's a final step that's not often spoken about reinforcement learning. LLM training often undergoes what can be known as RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback. Have you ever had ChatGPT ask you which response you prefer better? Whenever you select a preferred response, this probably gets added to a data set at OpenAI, which then they use to improve ChatGPT. They likely collect pairs of these inputs, your prompt, and outputs, the selected response, which then corresponds to a data set of human feedback. They can use this to train a whole different model called the reward model, which learns learns how to figure out which responses people prefer. This final step of training an LLM evolves attributing rewards to generations based on this reward model, and this teaches models how to go from speaking like an internet forum user to a helpful chatbot. So this reinforcement learning RL with a reward model is typically implemented to train an LLM, but DeepSeek did it differently with R1. For complex reasoning tasks, DeepSeek R10 was trained exclusively using RL, without any supervised fine-tuning beforehand. Instead of creating a large, bespoke, and probably expensive model to learn rewards, the DeepSeek researchers relied on a different process altogether. This process can be known as group relative policy optimization, which is given by this equation. Yeah, we're not going to go into detail on this terrifying monster, instead let's look at it from a more high-level perspective. When the model is trained based on reinforcement learning, we have access to two models, the original model and the updated model, which has undergone the next training step. To evaluate the proficiency of the updated model, we sample a bunch of answers from the original model and compare them to the same bunch of answers from the updated model. Each new answer has a corresponding reward associated with it, not from a reward model, but from a set of highly specific hard-coded functions. So in this example, the model would receive a reward from getting the answer right, but it would also receive a reward for correct formatting of the output. We can make updates to the model's parameters by evaluating across all answers from the new model how high each reward is. This is scaled on two factors, how different the updated model is from the original model and the average reward, so it normalizes the values based on a whole group of rewards. Don't worry if this doesn't make sense straight away, but you can think about it as rewarding the model when it gets the answers right based on a set of defined checkboxes. Without the requirement of a reward model, the model needs to evolve and learn on its own to figure out what it can do better. The researchers aren't telling the model the best way to solve the problems. One way in which the model learned to get higher rewards was to think more about a problem. Completely independently, DeepSeek R1 learned that more reasoning gives better solutions, something we as humans can probably take as common sense. For example, in the paper, the authors discuss the model having its own aha moment, where it realizes its current thinking is flawed, so it goes back on itself and starts again. Another interesting aspect of R10 is that it frequently mixed up which language it was using during its reasoning and thinking process. Maybe some languages convey certain thoughts a lot better than others? But this, as well as some other formatting-based issues, made R10 unsuitable as the final model. So instead of only using reinforcement learning to train their model, they first first trained a DeepSeek Re3 base model with a large amount of generated data, mostly reasoning examples, and then were able to train with reinforcement learning after so that the reasoning outputs are more human readable. Using this cold start with generated data enabled the model's outputs to be formatted a little bit nicer so it works better as an AI assistant. And that's how we got DeepSeek R1. As you've probably heard, this group of independent researchers in China who have given us a lot of detail on how they train their model as well as open 
sourcing it, have gone toe to toe with the dominant OpenAI O1, even surpassing it in some benchmarks. Plus, we're seeing super low costs and fast speeds, and have I mentioned it's open source? We've already added DeepSeek open source into Verba and have a recipe where you can try it out yourself, but as with all LLM apps, remember that you're sending your data away to their surfers and to be careful of privacy concerns. But it is so cool to have such detailed insights in how they train this new model, and because it's open source, we can use it on our own infrastructure and not have to worry about the security of sending private data through APIs. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around for this super long video, and as always, all the resources are linked in the description.